السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عندنا موضوع الأينس عن The Anal Canal نغطيه بمحاضرتين هذه هي المحاضرة الأولى Learning Objectives للموضوع اللي نتكلم عنه اللي هو الأينس عن The Anal Canal uh, First Describe the Applied Anatomy and histology of the anal canal وبهذا نكون احنا حققنا vertical integration between the basic and the clinical signs the second describe the clinical features investigations and principles of management of common anorectal diseases Surgical anatomy of the anal canal. Uh, the anal canal uh, commences at the level where the rectum passes downward and backwards for around 4 cm through the pelvic diaphragm and ends at the anal verge. And you the mini height rectum when you hit the anal verge, the tip of the سنتيمتر ورك طبعا اللي يسوي الانجل بين الركتم والانجل هو اللي بيوبو ركتالس مصل بحيث يكون ال داونورد اند باكورد باسج اوف ذا اينال كانال ناو وي ويل سبيك اباوت ذا امبريولوجي of the anal canal there is a line called the dentate line represent the sites of fusion between the proctodium which is the, in the continuation of the bowel and the post anatomic gut so this line is very important and landmarks for many anatomical physiological and pathological Conditions. The anal canal composed of two sphincters, the internal sphincter, which is a condensation of circular muscle of the bowel wall, while the external sphincter is composed of striated muscle. Its lower fibers encircle the anal canal and they can, can be divided into the deep superficial and subcutaneous portions. And superiorly, the external sphincter blends, which means mix with the puporctalis portions of the elevator ani muscle of the pelvic floor. You can see that in this section. At the same time, puporctalis muscle does not encircle the anus, and it is deficient anteriorly. You can see that in the uh, sagittal section, you can see that the puporctalis deficient anteriorly. And puporctalis muscle is very important in continence for the continence of the patients. The anal glands lie partly in the submucosal plane and partly between the sphincters and between the internal sphincter and external sphincter, the space is a more intersphincteric space or plane. Infection in this gland is thought to be the main cause of the perianal sepsis and fistulae. We will take that in the next one, inshallah. The orifices of the gland, and here gland is located in the submucosa or the intersphincteric space, تفتح هاي الجلاند بدكت 
فالأورفس تفتح وين هذه الأورفس مال الجلانس just above the anal valves and this is therefore the commonest size of the internal opening for fistula يعني تفتح وين مكانها يم الدنتيت لاين just above the anal valve and this is therefore the commonest size of the internal opening for a fistula so the anal glands is very important for the pathophysiology of the perianal abscess and fistula formation The supply to the anal canal is via the superior, middle, and inferior rectal vessels. There are vascular plexi lie beneath the mucosa of the anal canal. The main arterial inflow of the anal canal comes from the terminal branches of the superior rectal artery. Then the superior rectal artery, which is from the inferior, from the inferior mesenteric artery, which is branch from the aorta. So the main blood supply of the anal canal comes from the superior rectal artery. It is classically divided into three branches: left lateral, right anterolateral, and right posterolateral branch. So the left is branch one, the right is branch two. Of the anal canal, two branches. They anastomoses with the branches of the inferior rectal artery. A high anastomosis is very important. It will be in the portal circulation, it will be superior rectal artery, and systemic circulation, it inferior rectal artery, with portal hypertension. Other than that, it will be varices, it will be bleeding. So this is important the pathophysiology of the portal hypertension. Um, there are cushion also in the mucosa, especially موجودة بال above the dentate line. Hi, it is very important. Even the pathophysiology, the hemorrhoid, we will take it in the lecture, inshallah. Regarding the epithelium of the anal canal, the lining of the anal canal above the dentate line is similar to the columnar epithelium of the colon and rectum. يعني وحنا نعرف ال epithelium of the colon and rectum is the columnar epithelium. So the anal canal above the dentate line is similar to the colon and rectum, except Uh, when there is a junctional zone, we have a dentate line, so junctional zone, extend for about 1 cm above the dentate line. How they can vary from the columnar epithelium to the cuboidal epithelium. Even the color is different. It's here a plum uh, in color. Below this line, below the dentate line, it is a modified skin or some anoderm. Consisting of sequamous epithelium. Now, in this line, may be appendicular appendages. It has sweat glands or sebaceous glands. The color may be white in color. After that, it will be anal verge, which will be true anal skin, which will be pigmented skin, like the skin of the body. So there is difference in the lining of epithelium of the anal canal. هذا التغيير بالبثيلال لاينينج أوف ذا إنال كانال إز إمبورتنت وير إن ذا مالجنسي أز مالجنت ليجن أرايزينج إن ذا ديستال إنال كانال أر مور لايكلي تو بي سكوامال سيل كارسينوما يعني اللي جوا الدنتيت لاين يعني هو الإبثيليان لاينينج هو سكوامال سيل إبثيليان فالمالجنسي يكون سكوامال سيل كارسينوما بينما أباف ذا دنتيت لاين هو columnar epithelium or cubodal epithelium so it will be the malignancy and it will be the adenocarcinoma so the difference in the malignancy and of course the management is different the dentate line also marks the watershed of the lymphatic drainage the upper anal canal 
drain into the interferometric node يعني يروح للبلفيك interferometric node بينما باللور anal canal lymphatic drainage one يروح للانجوينال lymph node the dentate line also the uh, also the division between the somatic and visceral sensation يعني ذلك distal pathology in the anal canal uh, extremely painful ليش لي into the somatic sensation In this slide, you can see on the left the positions for examination of the anal canal, left lateral position, the above, knee elbow position, and lithotomy position. On the right, you can see the positions for the procedure when we want to do an operation to anal canal for anal pathology these are the positions suitable for the operations first the Leroy Davies positions which is suitable for lengthy operation then operation this is the preferred positions abdominal perineal surgery second lithotomy position uh, this is good for anal dissection, but the um, acute flexion of the hip and knee is undesirable for long time. The third position, who are prone jackknife position. Uh, view uh, excellent access to the posterior perineum and anus. And less venous congestion. Congestion is because of the gravity. But this disadvantage are mainly in the turning and ventilation of the anesthetized patients in position. يعني مشكلة عندنا بالانستيك بروبلم تصير مرات because شلون يدير المريض شلون يخدم المريض. It is not attract. It is not suitable for the uh, short minor procedure. Examination of the anus, careful clinical examination will be diagnostic in the vast majority of patients complaining of anal symptoms. But it requires a relaxed patient who is informed of what the examination is. I will say the examination is here. A private environment, نحتاج أيضا private environment, يعني في مكان خاص مو مفتوح. A chaperone, لازم أدنا uh, witness بال examination and good light. So uh, examination of the anus, it uh, is diagnostic in many cases. بس نشوف نفحص. نقدر نشخص الحالة مالة الأين الباثولوجي وش نحتاج بها؟ نحتاج بها لازم البيش يكون ريلاكس وانفورمد ونفهمه شنو راح نسوي لهي برايفت انفايرمنت يحتاج وشابيرون لازم مرافق يكون عندنا ويتنس لازم اكو يعني ما تفحص المريض الأين الباثولوجي وحدة لازم اكو وياك مرافق يكون او ويتنس وين نحتاج جود لايت ريكتال اكزامينيشن is essential for any patient for anorectal and bowel symptoms. If you don't put your finger in, you might put your foot in it. Procto sigmoidoscopy is an essential investigation in any patients with bowel symptoms and particularly if there is rectal bleeding هذا الجزء الاول من المحاضره